here's an occasion where we can have new exploration underground through a special visit to the Theater of Herculaneum, which is tied to the Herculaneum archaeological site with groups of no more than 10 people at a time. It's a must-see already to go to Herculaneum, an amazing time capsule where you can understand Roman life through what was preserved after the eruption of Vesuvius. But now there's something extra you can do. You can explore underground the theater of Herculaneum. Herculaneum is one of the great cities destroyed by Vesuvius and therefore being wonderfully preserved. You can visit the site of Herculaneum and you can also, with a special ticket, make an appointment and walk outside of this archaeological site, down the street, and descend in time and explore the theater of Herculaneum. So it's a park by itself as a separate site, but it is still an antiquity part of Herculaneum. So this was a much larger city than what you experience today in the archaeological park. In fact, it's in the theater of Herculaneum. That's where the discovery of the city began. The theater was constructed nearby the Forum of Herculaneum by the duo rear Aeneas Mamianus Rufus. The architect was Publius Numicius in the Augustan age. And this structure once held 2,000 spectators. It was damaged in the earthquake of 62 and subsequently restored. And then it was covered and hidden away by a mountain of volcanic material the pyrocrustic flow of ash, pumice, and mud from the eruption of Vesuvius in 79. The theater was rediscovered by accident in 1710. The farmer, Ambrogio Nucerino, was digging a well. And when he dug down and started to find pieces of marble, he knew that there was something special here. And subsequent investigation by other expert collectors realized it was clear this was a theater, and that meant with the theater, there was an entire city preserved underground. And that began the tunneling through, through ancient monuments of Herculaneum. And this site became extremely popular, and it was on the grand tour. So much so that the building on top, where you enter still today, was created specifically for the visitors of the Grand Tour. Today we are going into underneath the theater of Herculaneum. It's always about keep your head down as you go down. And so we descend. We're descending like the Victorian travelers. We are in a large corridor here, but quite soon it becomes much more narrow. Think about the excavators with their pickaxes coming through and tunneling basically through something as hard as concrete. But as we bottom out by the stage area of the theater, the area opens out. Look at that tunnel. Look at that hole from above for the excavators to originally descend to create basically a man-made cave. There's infiltration still today of water. Lime is deposited on the walls. So it's like we're in an artificial cave tunneled out, having removed all that volcanic material to explore this huge public monument. There are also two inscriptions which would have been accompanied by statuary. They're still on location in situ in the theater. Here's one that reads, To Appius Claudius Pulcher, son of Gaius, consul, hailed victorious commander, Imperator, the people of Herculaneum dedicated this after his death. And here is another inscription of a very famous character in the history of the city of Herculaneum. It reads, To Marcus Nonius Balbus, son of Marcus, Praetor, Proconsul, the people of Herculaneum dedicated it. Back into the theater, we're going to be investigating the various components of a theater. So what did an ancient theater look like in Roman times? There was the stage building called the Scene Frons, in front of which the protagonists would perform. They performed on a stage, a raised stage, called the Proscanium or Pulpitum. 
and in front of that was an open area called the orchestra, and then you had the auditorium or the cavea for the seating. Let's now identify these spaces in the visit today. The Scanny Franz, Bruscanium, and of course the cavea. The entire structure was once lined with marble, frescoes, and stuccos. Here are some examples of each. Take a look at this beautiful, vibrant color of fresco and these lovely stucco decorations. Looking at this wall, we can see the telltale signs that it was once faced with panels of marble that have since been removed. Various colored marbles were found and many statues, many of which are in the Dresden Museum and in the Archaeological Museum of Naples, the Man. Let's take a look at a few. Here's one bronze statue of a matron who's been identified as Livia. Here's a statue of Marcus Calatorius Quartio. How do we know? Because below the statue, there's this marble plaque that states that the citizens and foreign citizens financed by public subscription the erection of a statue to Marcus Calatorius Quartio. Here's another statue of bronze of Lucius Mamius Maximus. And the bronze plaque beneath states that the citizens and foreign citizens financed by public subscription the erection of a statue to Lucius Mamius Maximus. Here's a closer look at the Scanae Franz building. We can see it's made of brickwork, so this would have been a restoration part of the building after the earthquake of 62. And here again, we can see it was once lined with marble all the way up to the full height, as we see. And beyond it, all that material is the volcanic material deposited covering the theater. Look at that tunnel. That's how you first enter into the site when it's rediscovered. And these corridors are quite narrow. So it was an awful experience really to excavate here. And in fact, quite dangerous because there's radon in the material, the volcanic material, and it made a lot of the original diggers sick and a number of them died. So we can imagine that kind of incredible undertaking in the 18th century. Let's now ascend up the cavea. Now, most of it is not fully excavated. We do get a sense of the stairs leading up, but at a certain point, it's gonna open up due to a large portion of excavation Look at the full height here. This represents the mud and the ash that came over and hid away the entire site. Today, of course, we have this portion of the cavea revealed. But what an undertaking to excavate it out. And of course, here's another corridor. And as we look around, all kinds of surprises, ancient graffiti and Victorian era graffiti. As we walk along, it feels almost like this was made yesterday. This corridor of the theater, there's some reticulate work on the wall there to show you that we are walking through an ancient space, going up, going down. What's more exciting than exploring underground? The theater of Herculaneum. Special visit is something that you should reserve. Well, I hope you enjoyed exploring the theater of Herculaneum Please put it on your agenda. Please come and visit this extraordinary site. We've got a lot more of exploration coming your way in Rome, throughout Italy, and the Mediterranean. Please subscribe.